order, Tuesday, July 23rd, 2019, at 6 o'clock p.m. Roll call. Alderperson Madden. Here. Alderperson Kubaki. Here. Alderperson Inglehart. Here. Alderperson Kapusta. Here. Alderperson Borgman. Here. Alderperson Hamill. Here. Alderperson Wolf. Here. Thank you. Statement of public notice. We have uh, this meeting was noticed in accordance with the open meeting law. Thank you. Uh, communications from the mayor's office. I have three things. Um, one, I just in case you hadn't heard, I had the uh, unbelievable opportunity to greet the president of the United States on the tarmac last Friday. And in case you haven't heard why, um, I offered to do a little legwork throughout the state to reach out to county. Uh, city, town, and village leaders to participate in a phone conference with the White House to learn about the United States, Mexico, and Canada agreement. I'm all about learning and understanding because it will have an impact one way or the other um, on our businesses throughout the state. So for that, apparently, I earned the opportunity to greet the president, and it was quite the opportunity. So I'm honored to represent the city doing that. Um, Following that, um, the city newsletter, um, the last one in spring, the school district reached out to me, the um, superintendent, saying that they really wanted to kind of move in another direction and do things differently, and I understand that. They want to have a little bit more of the academic school look, and so I did ask if we could just at least participate in the last one, and they honored that because I didn't have enough time. But we are prepared now, and so we are now going to uh, in, have our newsletter included in the recreation guide. So we will save about $3,000 annually, and we will pick up a third issue because the other one was only two. So it, it's working out well in the end. Um, and then I just want to remind you of the parade is Sunday, August 25th. Uh, starts at 11 a.m. I will email the details. I'm sure we will meet in the same place, same time as we always have, but I'll send out as soon as I get. Thank you. Um, public hearing. Did I miss this? Do I read that? I can read it. It wasn't listed on my email. There's no public comment. Okay. Oh, public comment. I'm sorry. I have no public comment for an agenda item. If you're here to speak on a public hearing, you do not need to fill out a form. The first public hearing is to consider the petition of PJ's Trucking, LLC, to rezone tax key number 2257.979, located on Loomis Road and North Cape Road. The rezoning would be from B4, Highway Business District, to M1, Light Industrial District, for the purpose of allowing possible future storage of trucks, trailers, and material storage on the property. The 2020 Comprehensive Plan also needs to be amended from commercial use to industrial use. Thank you. Adam, is there anything you wanted to present? Um, yeah, just clarifying or just to explain a little bit further. Um, the owner of this property, the owner of this property now owns the property that's just down the road from this. Um, <clears throat> and they're looking at expanding their business as their business is being, doing successful in the city. Um, based upon the way they describe their use to the city, it seemed like the M1 was the most appropriate zoning because the M1 talks about allowing trucking type options and there would be trucking involved in this business. Business, The lot that's proposed, that's existing, does meet the proposed M1 zoning district. As was noted, the comprehensive plan does need to be amended as part of this proposal. Um, the rezoning, um, if approved, would ultimately have to be subject to the approval of a building site and operation plan which is when the Planning Commission would review anything relating to the aesthetics of the business, how it looks, what the buildings look like, screening, things like that. So. Thank you, Adam. Is there anyone here who wishes to speak on this particular public hearing? Come on up to the microphone, state your name and address. My name and is Steve Grandy. My address is S97W13656, Stonebridge Way. I live in Stonebridge, the neighborhood adjacent to Champions. We back up to Loomis Thir Road 36. I have a number of concerns about this proposal. One, as this is predominantly a residential area, industrial seems highly unusual and irregular to me. As a homeowner, we were looking for, you know, the business retail, a Starbucks, you know, a gas station, whatever. Um, the second concern is that since we'll be running semis, dump trucks, and tractor trailers in there, the access is going to be pretty ridiculous. Um, if even you can't access 36, so it's going to have to turn out onto 45, which is going to block that intersection. If a 
53 or 48 foot trailer comes out there and tries to make a left out of his property to get up to Loomis, we can't get through there. Um, last concern is the noise. I don't know what time construction companies start, but I was, when I was in the business, we were moving gravel at 6, 7 o'clock in the morning. I don't really want to live next to hearing gravel being dumped into dump trucks and then, then laboring to get out of the parking lot. Would any of you want a gravel pit in your backyard? Would anybody here, except you perhaps, sir, want you, a you, have to, you have to address the council. Okay. Mm -hmm. Would anybody really want that mm -hmm. much noise in your backyard? Does anybody think it's appropriate to put an industrial use where there's already zoned business this close to residential? So I'm here for a lot of my neighbors to express our vehement objection to this proposal of zoning industrial in the middle of our residential neighborhood. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there anyone else? Frankly, you come up, state your name and address. Hi, my name is Sandra Jacob. I live at South 97 West 12999 Champions Drive in the Champion Village subdivision. And I have also uh, similar concerns. Number one, uh, it's zone commercial. I don't feel there's the need to change the zoning to industrial. I, I think a business like this, there's plenty of areas in Mosquito that are available, already zoned industrial for a business of this sort. I don't think this is, uh, myself, I don't think this is what I would consider neighborhood friendly. I mean, it's, I think we're trying to, I mean, Muskego itself should try to increase the amount of people that are coming into the area. And we are developing a lot of new subdivisions, but we don't want to look like like there's no thought to Muskego. It's just, you know, dump this here on this corner, dump that there on that corner. This is a neighbor getting to be more of a neighborhood friendly area. I, I don't have any objection to like a, a strip mall of any sort, a, a Starbucks, a, you know, some smaller areas that are more neighborhood friendly, but not, you know, I mean, he's, this guy is talking about putting up screening. I mean, this is a pretty visible corner. And, and the other concern I have, aside from what's maybe good for the surrounding neighborhoods, because the neighborhood that abuts us right now, some of those homes in that subdivision are selling for 550000 and you're just going to dump a trucking site that al already is on Highway 45, you know, and, you know, it's, I don't know, to me it doesn't make sense, but the other concern is there are accidents. I mean, the back side of my home butts Highway 36, and there I, I would bet money on the fact that there is not a week that does not go by that there is not a severe accident of some sort on that corner. And then to be so close to Highway 36 in that intersection, and then to be exiting out onto 45 with everything that's going on from waste management, it just, um, you know, I would question again, the radius on um, coming onto 45 with, I don't, I don't know what size, is he talking about a pickup truck or is he talking about a semi or is he talking about a dump truck? but they're not going to make a turn onto Highway 45 without crossing into the oncoming lane when they make that turn. And uh, waste management, uh, you know, they go, I mean, even though the limit is posted at uh, 35, 40, 45 at different areas on North Cape, Waste management does not abide by the rules. And people in the morning don't abide by the rules. And it's, I mean, I don't know if you've been out there at 6 o'clock, 6.30 in the morning, but it's bumper to bumper. 
I just think we're just adding another problem onto that particular area. It's just a bad, mm -hmm. a, a bad intersection. And um, so that those are those are my concerns. I just think, like I said, there are other industrial areas further down 45 where the salvage area is, maybe off of uh, Racine Avenue in the industrial area. But I don't believe this is the corner for it. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? name and address my name is Frank Perugini um, I have a business an office right in a home across mm -hmm. the street from uh, PJW 125 S98 South North Cape Road um, I support the uh, development I think uh, it's a good use for the property it's about time that property is being used um, from a number of things PJ has been in that neighborhood trucking for 20 plus years I believe I don't know um, I haven't had a problem I haven't seen a problem I see the trucks go in and out yes uh, along with the other trucks that come down the road, but I think uh, unless he's going to expand his business, you know, tenfold overnight, I don't see that. Uh, he's just going to be moving his business to a different location. So we have somebody that wants to come and build in that area that has reputation, has an experience in that neighborhood, and I don't think there's been any problems with anybody there versus putting a strip mall or a Starbucks where we're going to have how many cars, 500, 600, 1,000 cars a day, you know, a whole different scheme of things. So we have a business that wants to develop that land that's been in the neighborhood that hasn't had a problem. Uh, that's why I support it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Come on. <laughs> yeah, I'm Joe Rubick. I live at South 97 West 12961 Champions Drive in the subdivision. The biggest concern I have, and, and this is a real problem with that area, is on double O coming to 36, going south, it's a huge hill. It's a very short hill, so cars coming down that hill um, have to make some decisions very quickly. Um, I'm constantly turning into the subdivision right there, and it's a real problem because as I'm coming down the hill, the distance turning onto Champions Drive into the subdivision to 36, turning out of 36 isn't very great. It's about half one house, one lot worth. Uh, so when I'm turning into the subdivision, I'm constantly fearful of the cars coming behind me that they're going to ram into me because they're going on to 36 and they're just going to continue to to come right up on me. So that happens all the time. So if we put a business there that's turning off onto 36, I'm sorry, onto 45 or double O there. Um, big trucks are going to create even more chaos in terms of people turning on to that sub onto that road and the potential for accidents to me just goes way up so that's my biggest concern and then I also echo the concerns of the other uh, neighbors who've expressed their issues so thank you thank you and I believe there was someone else Michael Alex, S98, W12712, Loomis Drive. Let me start by saying that we are glad to see development and investment interest raising in our part of Southeast Muskego. Unfortunately, right now, for our only frame of reference when describing where we are commercially is to ask, have you been to the dump? Obviously, that has its pluses and minuses, but as the limited landowners who have invested in the area commercially, we question why the trend is away from what we were told is a B4 district to now the second industrial zoning request in a matter of months. We have operated under the impression that the goal for this part of the city was to be a gateway to Muskego, which warranted a design overlay district described as Durham Hill, which the 2020 comprehensive plan describes as follows. Durham Hill has long been a historic commercial convenience area for the patrons in, south, in the southeast corner of the city. Over the decades, the Durham Hill area has lost much of that convenience, and the city looks to enhance this area in the future. A design guide is adopted outlining the desired qualities for future development, hopes of new small business development opportunities that fit the rural surroundings and historical origins of the area are desired. Safe and convenient pedestrian accesses, as well as quality visual appearances, appearances are the main goals. 
The area is, is along the highly traveled Highway 36 and will hopefully foster future retail and office establishments offering a wider range of commercial services and activities. Possible action plans for the area. I'll highlight uh, the last one, which is to advocate for landowners intending on adhering to the B4 commercial uses in the area. The current proposal obviously deviates from this approach, and I ask how and when the city's views of the area changed. Is this spot rezoning something that should be handled in a more comprehensive manner? Additionally, the types of proposed businesses in the development are what we have been told are not desirable or allowed in the area in attempts to have masonry indoor storage building, let alone outdoor storage, we are told to design and develop the land in a manner to eliminate or eliminate those features. This proposal places outdoor storage and material storage on a prominent corner with high traffic volume. Again, we enjoy seeing development, but is this the type of development the city would like to see on the other two vacant corners as well? I agree with the original 2020 comprehensive plan that targets the area as a commercial and retail resource for the area, specifically the residential neighbors in Champions Village and the expanding residential areas along the North Cape Corridor. I ask if this proposal meets both the goals of this strategic plan for the city, as well as the implementation of the Durham Hill Design Guide, which others, specifically our business, have been required to adhere to for our development. We have other questions and concerns from an access and a site plan perspective, but those comments would be more appropriate at the plan commission level should it, should it reach that point. Thank you. Thank you. Next. short sorry you, does it doesn't okay. it move <laughs> there we go <laughs> i'm uh, dr wayne jensen south 97 west 13126 champions drive uh as a homeowner in champions village all the concerns raised by my friends and neighbors uh are a thousand percent echoed by me so i won't i won't waste your time by repeating them i wish pj's trucking all the best with their business and the biggest concern that i have other than what was spoken here is the uh the the, the sort of the temptation of the forever zone change echoed by the, the man that just spoke here the idea of going from commercial to industrial and the fact that that genie will be really hard to get back in the bottle and as a person who chose to live in this area because of the uh, the residential and because it wasn't surrounded by uh, uh, an industrial park uh, i'm really concerned about that so i on behalf of my neighbors that i spoke I spoke quite a bit to my neighbors around me. Uh, we really strongly oppose this, and I hope you vote that way. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, since there are no other uh, comments regarding this public hearing, this public hearing is now closed. And we have another public. Well, sure, come on up. It's reopened. <laughs> I've, I've owned this trucking company for 40 years. I've been in Durham Hill for the last 25 years. Okay. I've been there. I'm good to my neighbors. I'm good to the people. I pick up garbage that a lot of people drive by my house and they lose trees, they lose tires, they lose all kinds of stuff, okay? I hire professional drivers. I don't hire just anybody off the street. We got drug and alcohol testing. We have safety meetings. We have all kinds of safety of our neighbors. All my trucks are all backed in. So when they leave in the morning at five o'clock or four o'clock, they leave, you don't hear beep, 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 beep. They all go out without a backup alarm. I do value my neighbors. I do value them very, 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 very important neighbors. I have a neighbor and I tell him, if there's a problem, come and see me personally. Don't go to the city, let's get it resolved right away. I ask them all the time, is there a problem? No, no, you're doing good. You're doing good, okay? I work for reputable companies. I work for D.F. Tomasini. I work for Pan Dolan. They're one of my largest customers. A lot of times, and I understand you people, your, your, your subdivision's built. I did put the roads in there 
just so you know. But a lot of times out here on the freeway, we get called out at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning to go fix the road because it was an accident. The only reason they call me is because they can get a hold of a trucking company that doesn't shut their phone off. Okay, I run a clean operation. I run a clean operation. You know, I understand, I, I live right down the road. I bought the house behind me. I just, all I wanna do is move my trucking company so all my stuff is in the area. We're not gonna be coming in and out 50 times a day. We're gonna leave in the morning, we're gonna come back in the afternoon or at night. Go ahead. Um, we, we can't, okay. this is the public hearing, we can't have the back and forth. Okay. Just have to state your. You can talk to them after. Okay. Well, that you can do. I'll bring that up. Mm -hmm. The materials that I'm going to store. Okay. The materials we drive way up north. We haul salt for the state of Wisconsin. We haul salt all over the state. States. We haul even in Illinois, Iowa. We haul all over. We get back hauls. Okay. The back hauls are for my customers. Blue Mail. Uh, Langs and other landscapers, we bring that product back. I'm not going to dump it at 12 o'clock at night, okay? It makes too much noise. All we do is we're going to dump it there in the winter time. Most of the windows are closed. A lot of the people from Champion Village talk about, oh, it's going to be an eyesore. I went over there the other day. I can't even see a house from Highway 36, a whole length of from the corner all the way down. I can't see it. You know, if there is a problem, I'll take care of it. If they want to berm up, they want a fence, I want to put trees up and I want to put some big decorative rocks up. I want to make it look very nice. I don't want to make it look like the landfill. They have a picture in here. The landfill's right down the road. We got two of them. They're not going to move. <coughs> okay. Okay, thank you. Um, you have to come up to the microphone and speak. It, it can't have the dialogue back and forth. You speak to the council. Hi, I'm Sandy Jacob again. I'm in the Champions Village subdivision. And I, I completely get where it's PJs, correct? Mm -hmm. I, I can, you, we're not saying as a Champions Village and adjoining neighborhoods, because there are some people here from uh, Stone Creek. I don't think any of us object to his business being in the city of Muskego. It's a lot of us, when we purchased property, we looked at, again, how the other gentleman brought up the city planning and what was important to us. And, you know, we, we, to we don't want to be next to an industrial area. And, and we're okay with the commercial aspect of it. But we don't I, I'm not, I am opposed to switching the zoning again to, just like he's asking us to be able to move his business, we're saying, we don't care if you're here in Muskego, good for you, we're glad you're profitable, we're glad you're a great business partner in the city of Muskego. Thank you for that and being considerate of everybody, but be an industrial area, not uh, not ask to go from commercial to industrial to that. That's I think what you know. We're that's one of the things that I'm asking for. Okay, thank you. Uh, Okay. Anybody else wants to speak that one more and then after this unless you, no we, and and only if you haven't spoke now after this. I'll let you come again, but after this, only if someone has not you spoken. Okay, <laughs> so I, I wish PJs all the best. My absolute and I'm sure they'll follow through on their word sorry. I'm sure they'll follow through on their word of berms and go, go, you know gorgeousness and loveliness and all those types of things. And I don't trust the next guy that's coming in, to be really blunt about it. So the idea that we're going to go from commercial to industrial 
while we may have a known partner right here who's going to do, you know, abide by his word and respect that and love that, having walked through that as a businessman, walking through uh, an industry that doesn't follow through on their word, once we make this change, once you all make this change, we're the victims of that. Please honor that. Please recognize that for those of us who are living in Champions Village. We don't want anything to do with that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone else who has not spoke that wishes to? Okay, with that, I'm going to close this public hearing. And then the next public hearing. To consider the petition of Mike Erickson of All Star Rentals, LLC, to rezone part of tax key number 2295.999.010 from A1, Agricultural District, to B4, Highway Business District, for the purpose of allowing a future land division and future commercial sales uses. Thank you. And Adam? Thank you, Mayor. Um, for those of you who may remember from the past, a year or two ago, All Star Rentals was in front of you for the same type of request. Um, at that time, they were looking at buying a piece of property, and they always wanted to have an option on an adjacent piece of land because All Star expects to expand again you know, down the road with the way their business is growing. So as part of that, um, they, they haven't gone through the purchase yet, and they realize that they want to take advantage of that option while they can. So instead of having, I think it was approximately eight acres before, now they're looking at rezoning 13 and a half acres. So same requests as before, same areas before, just a larger area. Um, the comp plan does call this area out for commercial, which their use would fall under. So it's really just expanding a district that was previously approved last year. Um, they will have to come forward for a separate building site and operation plan as well as the land division will also have to come back forward. Um, and then just one thing I'll kind of note, this rezoning hearing right now and the one that's going to happen right after this, because there's one more, actually kind of share part of the same property. This is the eastern half, and the rezoning that's going to be next is the western half. And I'll talk about that one then. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone here who wishes to speak regarding this public hearing? Okay, I, that uh, public hearing is now closed. And then we have one more public hearing. To consider petition of Brian Hearn to rezone part of tax key number 2295.999.010 and all of tax key number 2295.996.005 from A1 Agricultural District to B4 Highway Business District for the purpose of allowing a future land division and future commercial uses. And Adam? Thanks, Mayor. So like I mentioned, this is basically the western half of that site that I just mentioned previously. So it's that western half of that site as well as an adjacent lot that's just west of that. So it's actually two lots would take up this proposal. Um, this proposal is for the same zoning as that last one, which is going to our B4 district. Um, the owner or the potential owner of this area has stated their proposed use would be mini storage units. Um, they would need, most likely, I believe, a conditional use grant as a separate request from this, but the first step is going to the B4 zoning for this type of use that's out there. So same thing. They would be coming forward to plan commission for their site and operation approval down the road if the rezoning were to be granted. Thank you. Is there anyone here who wishes to be heard on regarding this public hearing? Come on up. Name and address. Huh? Name and address, please. Dave Addis. Uh, Plainfield, Wisconsin, West 12783 um, Aspen Avenue. Can we do that in a public hearing? I don't know. Well, we'll let you go. We usually we have own, a uh, Me and my father mm -hmm. own the land next to what this gentleman wants to do, mm -hmm. which I don't have any issues with, is how do I change mine to commercial? Is there going to be an access going to that where the tower is? Um, we'll address all those questions, Adam's writing them down, when we get to the agenda item. What's that? When we get to, we can't do the back and forth. This is just oh. present your questions or concerns, and then we'll address them I'm just under the item. I'm curious if I would be able to change ours from agricultural to commercial, too, if that would be leading with some access. So. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, then that public hearing is also closed. We will move on to the rest of the agenda, consent agenda, approval of operator licenses. I'm sorry, you read them. Do you want me to read them? Sure. 
You can finish. Okay. And approval of Common Council Minutes, July 9th, 2019, Resolution 58, 2019. Approval of Will Rose Apartments, Phase 1, Developers Agreement. Resolution 59, Appointment of a Citizen Member to Plan Commission and Parks and Conservation Committee. Looking for a motion. Motion to approve and gross. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Consent agenda items are approved unanimously. We have no new business. Review of committee reports. Finance Committee, June 25th, and Public Works and Safety Committee, June 17th. Thank you. And then first reading of ordinances and possible second reading if rules are waived. Ordinance number 1430, an ordinance to amend the zoning map of the 2020 Comprehensive Plan of the City of Muskego, B4 to M1, PJ's Trucking, LLC. Ordinance 1431, an ordinance to amend the zoning map of the City of Muskego, A1 to B4, All-Star Rentals, LLC. And Ordinance 1432, an ordinance to amend the zoning map of the City of Muskego, A1 to B4, RIN. License approval. Can we discuss any of these items? They're on there, so I believe that we can. Which one would you like to discuss? Um, I'd like to discuss PJs, first of all. Um, Adam, the... the uh, the connotation of going from commercial to industrial has a very negative connotation to it, I guess. Um, I always picture industrial being smokestacks and things like that. Is it possible to, to leave this area, remain as commercial with a CUG tied to PJ's business so that if his business is changed or if he sells the business, it goes back to strictly commercial usage? You can't just say we're going to pick a certain use as a CUG. The code has to say, like, trucking is allowed as a CUG. Could the code be changed to make an allowable use by CUG in a B4 trucking? Yeah, but you can't just say any use can be, can be deemed a CUG. It and actually, we can't hold him up to make that change. We wouldn't be able to hold him up to make that change. That would be illegal. I guess I don't understand that. Adam said we could change our code to require a trucking company to have a CUG, but that would be for going forward, not for this one. Okay. I'm just trying to think of a way to do this that ties this to PJ's business mm -hmm. so yeah, that when a new it, owner can't. can't. Yeah, when I... And the, yeah, I mean, a, a real reality, unfortunately, that is a risk. Any rezoning, you kind of run. Mm -hmm. um, we could we could talk to the attorney to see. I, I know with previous attorneys, they, they were always very much against what was called conditional zoning. I think our old attorneys even said that was kind of illegal, where you'd say we're a lot, we're rezoning it only for PJ's trucking use. Yeah, you can't do that. Um, that's called like conditional zoning. Um, I mean, maybe there's another tool that I haven't dealt with. So we could check with the attorney to see if there's an option that would specifically tie just to their use. Um, I mean, any time a property changes uses, they have to come through the city for an approval. It might just be a staff level approval, but in theory, if industrial use is allowed now and a new user comes in that's still doing trucking, maybe just a little heavier or something down the road, if PJ's you know moves out down the road when he retires or whatever, uh, in theory, the city would probably have to allow it. So I mean, when you do change it, it, it is a permanent thing, but you said we could, I guess, talk to the attorney to see if there's some kind of more um, specific tool that he's aware of legally that we can do without stepping over the bounds that we're allowed to to see if we can just do it for one use I'd like to see us pursue that if we could okay any other questions or comments okay now license approval approval of outside dance permit for pack and brew located on Woods Road for July 28th noon to 8 p.m. you need a motion move to approve second any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Is approved? Approval of outside dance permit and amendment to licensed premise for Crush Wine Bar located on Parkland Drive for September 7th, 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's approved. Um, voucher approval. Motion to approve utility vouchers in the amount of $566,811.66. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's approved. 
Move to approve general fund vouchers in the amount of one million three hundred ten thousand sixty-five dollars and twenty-three cents. Any discussion? A big part of that was um, the police de police de uh, department. The facility. The facility. So mm -hmm. that's item of interest. All um, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Is approved. Move to approve wire transfers for, for payroll transmittals in the amount of 340936 06. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Is approved. Uh, city official reports, I guess, speak on the police. They are they moved today. So um, it was a trying day for them, but, but the police department moved today. So um, there's, it's still, still in the works, though, I'm just going to say. It's never easy. We, we took almost a whole week just moving to this one. So um, communications and miscellaneous business. Any updates on any of these others? Can I update on the Mesquina senior taxi for, for Eileen there? Um, at the that's, last meeting, I, I isn't, that's Eileen's update. Was, was said about the, uh, at the ad hoc meeting, much was said about the, the length of rides and the, time, uh, the mileage and whatnot. Um, I, I drove today. Um, I had 16.3 uh, was the average mileage on a ride. And the average time was an hour. So, and that includes, also includes a lunch time in there. So, um, but uh, I, I think that's what I wanted to share that with you because it, uh, that's, that's pretty much where we were during the meeting. Thank you. Any other updates? Like, like district. Okay. All right. Uh, as directed by the council of meeting has taken place with the mayor and Steve Olson, the chair of the committee, plus myself. So their next meeting is uh, next uh, Thursday, I believe, and they'll be sharing that information at their meeting. Mm -hmm. And I thank you for coordinating that. Any other updates? Okay. Um, future agenda items, reconsiderations. <coughs> is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned.